أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ويوم يعض الظالم على يديه يقول يا ليتني اتخذت مع الرسول سبيلا يا ويلتى ليتني لم أتخذ فلانا خليلا لقد أضلني عن الذكر بعد إذ جاءني وكان الشيطان للإنسان خذولا وقال الرسول يا رب إن قوم اتخذوا هذا القرآن مهجورا رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي فالحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم أما بعد السلام عليكم قرآن ويكلي الحمد لله We are on the 19th juz and I'm reading to you a little bit from Surah Al-Furqan These are ayat numbers uh, 27 onwards The day on which the wrongdoer is going to be biting his hands This is an expression of extreme regret Ya laytani ya, uh, uh, And he's saying Yaqulu ya laytani ittakhathtu ma'ar rasooli sabila if only I had taken a path alongside the messenger. He doesn't even say, if only I believed in the messenger. He says, if only I had taken a path alongside the messenger. What are some of the wisdoms of mentioning path here? Judgment day comes, this person's on the wrong side. He sees the followers of the Prophet ﷺ going, marching their way towards paradise with him ahead of them. And he's like, why am I not there? How come I didn't take that path? How come I didn't take a life path in this life that leads to that path to Jannah? How come I, I was stupid enough not to follow that? So he's showing that regret. The ayah also highlights that believing in the Prophet ﷺ, loving him, respecting him, revering him, all of that is awesome but not enough. You have to walk his path. You have to go on his path. You have to live that life. You have to accept his teachings as teachings that apply to your lifestyle. Just having regard for him isn't enough. Alayhi salatu wasalam. And the true proof of love and regard for him is that his instructions mean more to us than what we want to do. You know? So he says, I wish I had taken a lifestyle up that was alongside, consistent with this messenger, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And then he blames his friends. Ya laytani, ya, ya waylata laytani lam attakhid fulhanan khalila. Oh my God, the worst possible thing has happened to me. If only I didn't take that guy as a friend. You know that guy, what's his name? Can't, that's what's his name. That's the Arabic trans, the English translation of Fulan. And I'm going to translate that as what's his face. What's his name? I don't even know what that guy's name is. But man, I used to hang out with him all the time. We spent all our time together. He's the one that told me Islam is stupid. Who needs to follow it? Why are you getting, why are you getting caught up in this crowd? Leave these people. They're dumb. They don't even know how to live life. Religion is for idiots. You know, be intellectual. And you, on judgment day comes, you can't even remember that guy's name. You can't even remember that guy's name. When you mention the messenger, Ar-Rasul, the messenger, as though you know who he is. And when you mention your friend who you used to hang out with, who was the reason for which you didn't choose the prophet, prophetic lifestyle, you can't even think of his name. You call him Fulan, which in Old English translates as so-and-so. Whoever, wh whatever that guy was. That I translated as what's his name. You know, I, I wish I didn't take him as a friend. لَقَدْ أَضَلَّنِي عَنِ الذِّكْرِ بَعْدَ إِذْ جَأَنِي that guy made me slip away and misguided me away from the reminder, the Qur'an, after it had come to me. Meaning this person was exposed to the true religion. They were even a Muslim even. They didn't want to follow the lifestyle. Even though reminders were coming. They were coming through some other good friends. They were coming through a khutbah that they attended once in a while. Didn't care for it. وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ لِلْإِنسَانِ خَذُولَ And the, the devil, the shaitan, especially when it comes to the human being, he's khadul. Khadul in Arabic is used for a friend who, who acts like he's your friend until the right moment. Then he slips away and you're left hanging. That's what shaitan will do to you. He'll lead you all the way to hell and then try to run away. Khadula. And now this is the scene of judgment day, right? This person's in regret because he's not, he's not along those who are marching to paradise you know, with the Prophet I And mean, he sees the Prophet from a distance. Now Allah gives the Prophet I mean, a chance to speak. And it's as though the Prophet I mean, turns back to these people that are in regret, that are wishing they could be alongside the Messenger. So they might be hoping that the Prophet will turn back وسلم, and say something that will rescue them. Because as we know, the Prophet might make shafa'ah, he might intercede. So what's he going to say? So Allah says, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولِ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا 
He says, the messenger will say, my master, this nation of mine, this group of mine, these part of my people, this could be referring to the Quraysh who disbelieved in the Prophet but it's not limited to them. It could also be members of this Ummah. That's classical tafsir too. Members of this Ummah that didn't care for Allah's book, Allah's teachings, but call themselves Muslims anyway, just Muslim by name. Muslim by, uh, by, by inheritance. You know, uh, just because just it's been passed down is a Muslim name. Allah says about them, these are the people, they took the Qur'an, هذا Qur'an, this Qur'an, this... Allah didn't even say, He doesn't even say that Qur'an, He says this Qur'an, because the Qur'an is near, it's accessible, it's not like you have to make great hurdles to come to it. And He says, he, they took it and they abandoned it, they left it. Now imagine the people against whom Allah's Messenger is testifying. He's testifying about these people, they couldn't take the Qur'an seriously. You and I have to take the Qur'an seriously. I know we're supposed to be spreading messages of hope, and optimism, but we're also supposed to be honest with each other. This, this matter, it, it, this is a matter of salvation. We, you and I, whether we accept it or not, whether we live a life that is based on actual reality and how things are going to go down on Judgment Day, whether you care about Judgment Day or not, it's still coming. Whether you believe it or not, it's still coming. Whether you're fasting this Ramadan or not, it's still coming. Whether you're praying or not, it's still coming. Whether you're obeying Allah in everything you do or not, it's still coming. There's no escape from it. You want to think about it, and you don't want to think about it, it won't change reality. It is still coming. And we will still have to stand. And we, the only thing we have right now is Allah's book and each other to remind each other. And the, the, the great legacy of our Prophet to remind each other and say, let's get our act together. We don't want to be on the wrong side on that day. May Allah make us of those who took a path alongside the Messenger وسلم, in this life so that we can march with him into the paradise on Judgment Day. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.